Hello friends, let's talk about databases that are used by Kubernetes internally. By default, Kubernetes relies on ATCD, which is a scalable and highly available key value store. Whenever you deploy your application, service, or any other type of deployment on Kubernetes, the information about the deployment is going to be stored and tracked in ATCD. However, there are times when you might want to replace ATCD with another database. Some people say that you can come across various scalability challenges with ATCD, especially if you run Kubernetes clusters with thousands of nodes. The other folks raise the concern on the state of the ATCD community. Looks like there are not so many active maintainers of the project. However, let's put those reasons aside and talk about project called Kine that exists in the Kubernetes ecosystem. If you use Kine, you can replace ETCD with another relational database. Kubernetes is going to talk to Kine directly, and then Kine is going to store all the information about the Kubernetes deployments in your favorite relational database. And in this video today, we'll see how to use distributed PostgreSQL deployment as a database for Kubernetes. Why? Because if you use Postgres, Postgres is very reliable and fastest growing database. And plus, you can run it in a highly available and scalable configuration. So let's not waste a minute and see how we can run Kubernetes on distributed PostgreSQL. All right, friends, let's begin. I've headed to the current repository on GitHub. And if you scroll down, you will find that very minimalistic project description. All you need to know is that Kine is an ETCD shim that translates ETCD API to one of these databases. I don't know what ETCD shim is, but nevertheless, it's just a translation layer. At the first step, let's use single server Postgres instance as a database for Kubernetes. It's easy to accomplish. I'm connected to one of my virtual machines in the United States West 2. It's in Los Angeles. Kine was cloned previously. You can find the structure of the repository. Postgres also runs on the same machine. Let me connect to my Postgres instance. I'll be using Postgres username and also I will use PSQL tool for the database connectivity. We connected to Postgres. If you run this command, you will find that we don't have any tables or any other database objects in Postgres. However, we are certainly going to change this in a moment. Kine is written in Go. That's why I'm going to use go run command to start an instance of Kine on this virtual machine. And at least you need to pass the following parameter, their database endpoint. You are saying that Kine, please use the Postgres backend implementation. And my Postgres is located here. Postgres runs on the loopback address on my local host. And this is the port number. Postgres and Postgres, uh, this is the most secured username and password, but jokes aside, never use this combination in production. Starting Kine, and it will take yeah, a few seconds, and it said that Kine is already available at the following address. What if we jump back to our Postgres connection? If you execute the same command, you will find that Kine table is already created. This is exactly where Kine is going to store all that meta information that is generated by Kubernetes. And also every event that is generated by Kubernetes needs to have a unique identifier. Kine uses this database sequence to generate those unique IDs. So what's next? Let's uh, take a look at the structure of this Kine table. You will find that, yes, we have this ID of the beacon type, we have the name, we have different events uh, and indexes. If you do this select ID and name column from Kine, Let's select the last three. You will find that, yeah, even though Kubernetes is not connected to Kine yet, Kine itself uh, has already generated some metadata and stores it in our Postgres instance. However, now, what I want to do, uh, let me stop Kine, because my next step, I want to deploy Kubernetes over this locally running Postgres instance. Let me drop uh, this existing kind table, so it's all done, no any other relations. What Kubernetes deployment should we pick? You certainly can use classic Kubernetes with kind and kind can work as a standalone process nearby. However, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to use K3S today. K3S is a lightweight version of the Kubernetes. 
So what's cool about it, if you scroll down, you'll find that K3S comes with all of those essential Kubernetes components, such as Control Manager, Kubelet, API Server, etc. But also, it comes with Kine prepackaged, which means that I just need to start this K3S deployment on my machine. Let's give this a try. We are going to use the following command. I'm going to use curl to download the installation script of K3S from the following address. And then I will start K3S in the server configuration, passing a few parameters, secure token. And the most important parameter is the data store endpoint. And if you pay attention to the data store URL, you will see that it looks exactly the same as the one that we used for kind previously. We are telling to K3S that yes, please use Postgres implementation and K3S will figure out, all right, if you want me to use Postgres, then I need to use Kine. And then this connection string will be passed to Kine and Kine will connect to my uh, Postgres instance. Let's start it. It's downloaded. It's being initialized as a system service. If we check uh, the state of the database, we will see that the table was already created. Now let's uh, select the last three events. Uh, I want to order by ID descending order, the latest first. And you'll see that Kubernetes has literally started a few seconds ago, and it has already generated so many events. And we can track those events using the watch command of PSQL. Now, every several seconds, this query will be executed and you will see that the number of IDs is being generated and incremented indefinitely, which means that Kubernetes is alive, it's up and running. However, we can always uh, use K3S, uh, cube, cube CTL, get nodes to check that the control plane and master are running and it was all started 68 seconds ago. Wonderful. So this is how easy it is to deploy Kubernetes on a relational database such as Postgres and using Kine as a translation layer. And what's next? There is one stark difference between etcd and Postgres. Even though Postgres is one of the fastest growing databases, it's not scalable and highly available by design. What it means? When you run etcd as a Kubernetes meta store, it's horizontally scalable. And it's also highly available. It uses draft consensus protocol to replicate changes and information that is generated by Kubernetes. And the standalone Postgres instance doesn't do this. It's just one single server Postgres running and it can fail and it cannot scale horizontally. However, luckily, Postgres is very extensible. And in Postgres ecosystem, there are various solutions that can make Postgres distributed, that can make Postgres horizontally scalable and highly available. And today we are going to use Yuga by DB as one of the options. Yuga by DB is a distributed SQL database that is built on Postgres. So you can literally think of it as a distributed version of Postgres. I've already deployed Yuga by DB across these three virtual machines, United States uh, West 2, Los Angeles, then uh, West 3 in Salt Lake City and uh, West 1 in uh, Oregon. I'm connected to this Yuga by DB using the following graphical interface. If you go to the nodes tab, you will see that yes, on all of those VMs, at least I have one database node running. Also, when it comes to Yuga by DB, it will take all your application tables in data and it will distribute it across all of those nodes. It uses special sharding techniques to make sure that every node stores a subset of the data. Then, similarly to etcd, Yuga by DB uses the RAF consensus protocol to replicate changes synchronously across your database. And in this configuration, all the changes and all the metadata information that is going to be written by Kubernetes to Yuga by DB, it will be replicated across multiple cloud regions. And this way you will be able to achieve high availability at the region level. Even if one of these regions goes down, your Kubernetes cluster and your database will remain operational because you will have data available in other regions. When it comes to scalability, you can deploy as many nodes as you like, and this way you will be able to scale both your storage and compute. Now, let's see how difficult it is to migrate Kine and Kubernetes from standalone Postgres instance to this distributed Yuga by DB cluster. I no longer need a connection to this Postgres instance. Uh, let's close it. 
And also I need to stop the K3S deployment on my local machine. We will recreate this deployment by connecting to the Yuga by DB cluster. One of the database nodes runs on this virtual machine. Let's use PSQL to connect to that instance. The host number needs to be the private IP address of this machine. Port number is 5433 and the user is Yugabyte. As long as Yugabyte DB is built on Postgres, you can reuse most of the extensions, libraries and frameworks that we created for Postgres. And PSQL is uh, one of them. Next, if you check uh, the status of the database, there are no any tables and any other types of relations. However, we are certainly going to address this shortly. Now, what I'm going to do, I will start K3S on my machine using the same approach. I'm using curl to download the installation script, and then I'm starting K3S in the server configuration. However, in the data store endpoint, there is only one slight change. I still ask kind to use the Postgres backend implementation because Yuga by DB is distributed Postgres. However, I'm asking to connect to the following instance of our uh, Yuga by DB cluster. It runs on the following IP address, so that's one of the nodes, and this is also not the most secured combination of the password and username, but at least it's good for my experiments. Let's start it. And also in a few seconds, uh, Kubernetes uh, will be running on Yuga by DB. In the meantime, we can check uh, that the tables uh, were created. Next, uh, let's take a look at the events uh, that are being generated by Kubernetes. Uh, we want to know the event ID, event name. We are requesting this from the kind table. Uh, we want to order by ID in the descending order. And let's get the last three events. You can see that also Kubernetes has just started and it already generated over 500 events and those events are replicated across several cloud regions by Yuga by DB. Now, if you use the same watch command, you will be able to execute this request indefinitely and you will see that Kubernetes keeps and keeps generating all their different information. All right, if we want to complete uh, this test, so let's use a kubectl command uh, to get uh, the nodes. You'll see that everything runs uh, smoothly on uh, Yuga by DB. However, do we have any applications there? We don't have. Let's do this. If I go to my local Kubernetes folder, I will find uh, a project with Kubernetes samples that were downloaded from the GitHub, several applications. I want to deploy this emoji water example to my Kubernetes cluster. For that, I will use kubectl apply command and I am passing a reference to the customized configuration. The deployment has been started and now let's pay attention yeah, to this information that is being printed by the watch command. Let's stop it. If you scroll up, you'll see that in the history, Kubernetes has successfully deployed that application and the information about the deployment was passed to Kind and Kind stored this information in our Yuga by DB cluster and that information was successfully replicated across cloud regions. Nice. Now let's restart our watch command. Let's see what was deployed. So we deployed several microservices as pods. They are up and running. Mm -hmm. Then we deployed several services. One of the service, yeah, we can connect to it uh, on the port number 80, and they will do this in a moment, and also some other deployments and replica threads. So successfully, everything is up and running. Now, let me connect to the application. I want to make sure that the application is in fact response. I will use HTTP tool, get method uh, to connect to the following IP address and port number. And here's the response by my application. Job done, my friend. We successfully deployed Kubernetes on a distributed PostgreSQL and uh, we managed to deploy our first sample application. How do you like this, my friend? Isn't it cool? It literally took us a few minutes to deploy Kubernetes on a distributed PostgreSQL instance using Kine as a translation layer. So in the future, whenever you find a reason to replace ATCD with Postgres or another database, there is an easy way. Hope you liked it and keep mastering databases. Bye-bye now.